Great to see you here. We are going to the second video in the topic of linear programming. And here we are going to look at some important basic assumptions that we have to comply with before considering a problem that can be resolved using linear programming. We we'll look at the different equations, the constraints, the objective functions, and of course we will look deeper into some applications, typical applications that have been developed and variations on the theme of linear programming. Now when we look at the constraints and the objective functions, uh, or function better, we look at the type of problems that relate to optimization where we have limited resources. And we try to find the best utilization of these resources. Now, the type of problems that we can evaluate are either maximizations and minimization problems. Now, when we look at the limitations, the limitations of resources are in fact used to create the constraints. So we have uh, limitations of resources, people, machines, we have budget, storage space, other elements, and they're expressed in a linear combination of the different parameters, the coefficients ai to an, and the variables x1 up to xn. And we can express those constraints as being smaller than or equal to a number that's expressing the constraint, bi, or larger than or equal that same coefficient. It depends on the problem, what type of constraints that we will identify. But it can be both types. Now, on the other hand, we have to express the optimization, and we do that using the objective function. And the objective function is of the form um, coefficient multiplied with the quantity ci times xi and for example c the parameter c can express the profit that you will obtain when you buy a certain product and we have that for all the products for all the variables we have those profit coefficients and of course when we have a profit we want to maximize the profit. On the other hand, when we have costs, we try to minimize the cost. So basically that objective function has to be deducted from the information that we have. The element that we are going to do is to look at the basic assumptions. And the basic assumptions before we start dealing with linear programming, we have to be sure that they are met. First of all, the problem can be expressed in a linear form. We have a linear equation, a linear inequality that expresses the constraints. If it's not linear, we cannot use it. We are limited to a finite number of equations and a finite number of variables. It doesn't mean it cannot be big. Look at the first problem where we had 70 equations and 70 variables. So basically, this is a very important thing to know. We can have very large numbers, but they have to be finite. Another element is that the result of the constraint leads to a closed zone, a closed zone in which I find acceptable solutions. All the elements in that zone are in fact compliant with all the constraints, and we call that zone the feasibility zone. Another element is that there are more than one optimization condition, so we have to have more conditions, not just one, because that would be useless. We have to have at least two optimization conditions, so two constraints that we need to have in order to define the problem as a linear programming problem. The solutions are real numbers. In some cases, we will see that real numbers are not acceptable, and then we have to deal with integers, but that we will see later in this video, that's a different type of application. On the other hand, there is a method that we can use to resolve the problem. Uh, we have the simplex methods, we have computer methods and algorithms that can be used. We also have to be limited to either a maximization or a minimization problems. 
or problem, sorry, other problems cannot be resolved using linear programming. We also have the parameters of the objective functions that have to be known with sufficient certainty. We have to have some certainty about those parameters. Now, typically they're external parameters, not always with, within our reach, but we have to know enough about it. We have to be certain that these parameters are acceptable. We also have some additional conditions that we have to um, include when we look at the typical mathematical um, evaluation of linear inequalities. Those conditions can be, let's say, anything. Here we have to add some additional conditions. First of all, we have the negativity conditions. It means that the parameters, the variables, have to be positive. So they have to be positive integers. They can be equal to zero, but they can not be negative. The second element is that there is only one objective function. So it's either expressing a profit or a cost. When we have a profit, we have, in fact, a maximization problem. When we have a cost, we have a minimization problems. And the parameters that are part of the linear inequalities these are certain parameters. So when we have the constraints, when we are looking at the budget and the storage, well, we know how big a box is, we know how much storage space we have. So basically, those are certain parameters. Now let's have a look at some methods that exist. Now there are different methods that have been developed. The original method was developed during the Second World War by George Danzig. And that method led to the simplex method as we know it today. Now, uh, from 1947, it was free to use. It became very popular. And it was at the same time that the computer started to develop. We remember that during the Second World War, the um, uh, first machines were built in order to decrypt the coding of the German Enigma machine by Alan Turing. And we know that from then on, computers were being developed and became more and more popular. Now, it's also that at that time, people started to write algorithms because the computer would provide a better way to resolve linear programming problems. We can use a solution, a manual solution, which is reduced to two parameters, then we can do it on a piece of paper, we can draw it on the board, we can evaluate how it works. And it's a good way to show how the linear programming method is in fact working. However, in most possibilities, in most cases, two parameters will not be enough. So basically there are different elements, different programs that have been developed that are interesting for resolving linear programming problems, for example, the program R. And there is also the solvers, or there are the solver programs, which are typically add-ins for Excel. So once you have a program like Excel, you can add in a solver. And basically, when you buy Excel, or when you have a license to Excel, you have, in fact, a solver that can be included. It is limited, but there are open source versions and paying versions. You can find open solver or some other applications. All depends on your real needs. For the needs of this course, the built-in solver of Excel is sufficient. Let me look at some example, uh, a typical example that we can consider we have a statement that we have to evaluate. And that statement here, we are selling two delicacies, which are French snails and frog legs. We have a budget that cannot be exceeded. So we have dollar, the budget is the limitation for the financial part. And we have a storage place, which is also limited by the physical constraints of the storage itself. We know how big a box of snails is, a box of frog legs, and we know the cost of these items. So we know how much we are paying for them when we buy them. And also we have an additional condition. We cannot have 
too many boxes of either of those products. They are limited by certain amounts, let's say due to hygienic reasons or whatever reasons there are. And we know when we sell a box of profit, uh, sorry, a box of snails, how much profit we make and how much we make when we sell a box of frog legs. I called the variables X index FS for the French snails and Y index FL for the frog legs. We have the cost of a box is dollar A and dollar B for respectively the snails and the frog legs. We have a surface for each box given by M index FS and index FL. We know the limitations given by the number limit FS is the number of elements we cannot uh, exceed. And we know the profit when we are selling those different products. Now what we want to do, we want to resolve the problem and maybe what we have to do is we first have to express the different equations. We find here the elements related to the cost, so we have the two variables, we have the cost of the items and we can express this as a constraint because the total cost of buying snails and frog legs should be lower or equal to the budget which is given by this linear inequality. We can create a similar equation which relates to the storage. We still have the same variables. Now we have the space each item takes and the storage constraint. And the constraint is then expressed as the total storage that I need to put all the boxes in the storage. And this has to be smaller than or equal to the available storage capacity. We have some other equations. We have those limitations, the number of boxes that cannot be exceeded, which gives us two additional limitations, two additional constraints. So basically these are all the equations that we found in the description. But since we are dealing with a linear programming problem, we have to add the non-negativity conditions and we have to express that both the variables are larger or equal than zero. The last element to determine is in fact the objective function. And here we have to express the profit. When we have X and Y, we know for the French snails how much profit we have for a box. For the frog legs, we know it also. And we try to find or we express the profit as a linear combination of those two variables. And we try to have this as a maximum value. We want to have the highest possible output. So now we can draw the feasibility zone, but first let's have a look of the summary of all the equations that we are going to use, because this is typically something you will find in many examples. Of course, there can be much more variables and many more equations. But typically for educational reasons I have these simple problems that I will consider in this course. Now when we look at the graph we start by drawing the graph of course, drawing the first line, the linear expression of one of the constraints. All the points on the line are in fact representing the equal sign. We don't have the constraint here yet and now we have to evaluate which side of the line is basically the part or the half plane that complies with the constraints. This case it will be below so I color the opposite side so in order to make it a little bit easier to identify the feasibility zone I decided to color the other side and basically the purple area is in fact the part of the plane that does not comply with the constraint. We put the second constraint there, the red line, which is the border, and we also identify the area which is not compliant with the constraints. And we see that all below the purple and the red line is in fact the zone in which all these two constraints are met. We continue with the horizontal constraint that we have, the limitation on y, 
the limitation on x and basically we find a zone but there is still something missing we still have to come uh, to add the non-zero condition so we can say that y cannot be negative we exclude that zone everything to the left of the or sorry x cannot be negative so we exclude everything to the left of the y-axis and we cannot have y being negative so we exclude everything below the x-axis and the white zone that we have here clearly identifies the feasibility zone now what we're going to do here we can draw the objective function over the feasibility zone until it reaches the outer border the last point of the feasibility zone it will only have one point and that one point will be the solution of this problem now that's a graphical solution we also can find the different intersection points which are the border points of the uh, feasibility zone and we can calculate the value of the objective function in those points and the maximum value will give you the solution so that's basically what we're going to do in the following videos we're going to identify the equations we're going to draw the graph we're going to identify the feasibility zone and then we're going to find the optimal solutions uh, optimal solution basically but we will see later that in some cases there may be more solutions but these are special cases and they will be explained in different videos later in this course now we can have a look at the different applications that we can consider and since linear programming has become very popular it's a very interesting method to use in company management in planning production transportation project management portfolio management and we can find some examples like what we call network flows transportation problems the traveling salesman problems or problem uh, production optimization cases military applications all kinds of applications are very useful for being resolved with the linear programming method now in some cases there are some dedicated simplified methods to that can be applied and we can also resolve them in the general way but it depends certainly at a time when we didn't have so many computers available it became very interesting to develop some simplified methods that we can still evaluate today because basically they are at the basis of the algorithm now we can also look at some variations of linear programming now when we look at the solutions when we looked at uh, linear programming we basically have what we call real numbers as solutions and in some cases for example i have uh, 7.5 cars or 15.35 cars this is not really possible we have to limit it to 15 cars and in that case the result will not be a real number but a positive integer now in some cases we cannot have real numbers and we need positive integers in that case we call it integer programming and a method has been developed to calculate the or to resolve this type of problems but only resulting in integers we call it integer programming now when you look at the solver that's integrated with excel or the other solvers you will see that there is a possibility to select the type of output you can select that you only want to have integers and then the program will apply the principles of integer programming on the other hand there are also equations which are not linear and in that case we also cannot apply the methods of linear programming and we basically have to review uh, the equations and different methods have been developed to deal with that so basically these are the different variations that we can have related to linear programming problems that cannot be resolved using linear programming but still some specified methods exist for it now these methods are not part of this course they may be part of different courses that i will make in the future or they can be presented in some youtube videos 
This was I want, what I wanted to tell you about linear programming, how to start it, what are the conditions, how do we uh, typically go through it, what are the different steps to follow. And based on what we learn now, we will continue with an example of a maximization problem. We will resolve it in three steps. The first step will be writing the equations. The second step will be identifying the feasibility zone. And the last step will be finding the optimal solution. Now, the next video will be dedicated to step one. We will describe the problem. We will identify the equations and then we continue with the exercise. You're doing a great job. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you and bye-bye.